like this. You go across the street and you buy a home for 150k. Now you have to pay more of PT. <clears throat> All right, we're going to start with our jumping jacks. Let's get that right. All right, we're going to start with our one minute PT. Get my clock going here. All right. Let me get. I 
Marinho. Run in place. Get the blood, blood pumping. Knees to elbows, knees to elbows, high knees to elbows. Jumping jacks. Toe touches. Stretch out, touch your toes. Double jacks. I need. Frame place. And that's it. Hope y'all feeling good. It's Friday morning. It's Friday. Last day of the week. God has blessed us with a whole week of boot camp. This is uh, day seven of boot camp. I'm excited. All right, let's go. Great idea. Just go to school, get a job, work hard, save money, get out of debt, and invest for the long term in the stock market. See, why would you save money when they're printing trillions of dollars? The gap between the 1% and 99% is massive. You see, it's not just money. You have to step back and look at the bigger picture. So what do you do? In every one of us is a poor person. There's still a poor person inside me. There's also a middle class person. And the middle class person wants security. They want that steady paycheck. And there's a rich person. And they're all inside of us, except that it's not taught. If you're taught to go to school, get a job, and get a paycheck. You're not taught how to get rich. If you're red, rich dad, poor dad, my rich dad refused to pay me. He said the paycheck was one of the most damaging things you could take in your life. He says the moment you take a paycheck, you're an employee, and that's the mindset. So my rich dad never paid me. He drove my poor dad, you know, government employee, nuts. You gotta pay people, you gotta pay people. And rich dad was not saying that the paycheck was bad. He says he, he didn't want to be a slave to money. So as an entrepreneur, you know, if, if, if rich dad folded, I just started another company. I don't need a paycheck. I don't need anybody to take care of me. If my government doesn't like me, I move to another country because they need entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. there. So the entrepreneur is not so much the business. The entrepreneur is really the mindset and the skill sets and the different set of rules. You see, I don't operate. Small business does not operate in the same rules as big business. Entrepreneur is a mindset first, a skill set and rules. And depending upon whether you're an employee or a small business, mm -hmm. the roles are different. The mindsets are different. The skill sets are different. You could say one thing to somebody who has never been an entrepreneur and they're thinking about making the leap of faith into becoming an entrepreneur. What could you tell them? Well, I'll just tell them the same thing that happened to me. You know, my last paycheck, I still remember it clearly. It was one of the worst and the best days of my life. And I was in Puerto Rico. I was, in, I was working for Xerox. And my boss gave me my last, it wasn't a paycheck, it was a bonus check. I think it was about 30,000 bucks taxable. So no problem with that. So I got this check and I went, holy mackerel. You know what I mean? So I was excited, but I was also disturbed. And so this other guy comes up to me, his name was John. And John says to me, he says, you're gonna be back. I said, why? He says, cause you're gonna fail. I looked at him and said, look, few expletive words, because that's what he did. He left Xerox, failed, and he came back. And I said, look, da -da -da, you failed and you come, came back, but I'm going to fail and I'm never coming back. And that's the attitude. Do you know what I mean? If, yeah, if, if you say, well, if I fail, I'll go back to mommy and daddy, then that's what you'll do. So if you fail, that's when I became an entrepreneur because I had no money. I had no money for years. You know, I didn't have a paycheck. But that's what my rich dad encouraged me to do. He says, when, you're, when you don't have this paycheck, you get hungrier, smarter, and it's a test of your character. Or you become a crook. 
you become dishonest, will you cheat and steal, or will you become a better human being? So really that's the benefit of becoming an entrepreneur. You really find out who you are when you don't have anything. So you always have to look at the big picture. Too many people look at, well, what's, it, what's going to happen to me? When you look at the big picture, you're also going to know <clears throat> that when something bad happens, something good's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But you got to prepare for whatever is coming. If you think next 20 years will be like the last 20 years, mm -hmm. you're going to be creamed. You know, when you and I go to the supermarket and we buy a carton of milk, we always check for the expiration date. But most people do not check for the expiration date on their brains. Instead of get out of debt, I get into debt. You know, I just refinanced 300 million in debt. I went from 5% to 2.5% interest. I made a fortune. Every month, more money comes in because my cost of money has gone down. So while some financial experts are saying get out of debt, I'm saying learn how to use debt. See, when I came back from seven, in Vietnam in January of 73, the first thing my rich dad said to me was go to school to learn how to invest in real estate. It wasn't real estate, it was how to use debt and taxes. Debt and taxes make the rich richer. Debt and taxes make the poor and middle class poor. So all the rich guys who are doctors or lawyers or, you know, those guys, they're getting creamed. They don't know why. Doctors are getting creamed. Oh yeah, they're making more money, but the take home is less. Sure. You know, I, I, my doctor just yelled at me, he's happy, he says, oh, guess what, I finally made a million dollars. And I said, yeah, cause this was three weeks ago. And so I said, yeah, well, well, how much you pay in tax? He says, 750,000 in taxes. So his net was about 400,000. That's not bad. But when I make a million bucks, I keep a million bucks. And the reason is because I don't make it by working for money. See, if you work for money, you're taxed. So that's why lesson number one in Rich Dad Poor Dad is the rich don't work for money. What we do instead is we create businesses as entrepreneurs, we acquire real estate. I don't want to invest in the stock market. Okay. So the reason is because as entrepreneurs, I have more control over my income, how much I make and how much I pay in taxes. And because I'm an entrepreneur, as well as an investor in real estate, I pay zero tax. So every time I make, let's say a million dollars as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. I immediately invest in real estate. I have a four to one step up. So I put a million dollars in real estate, I get 4 million from the bank. That's why I love banks, but the banks are screwing everybody else. You know, terrible, but it's good for me. That's you know, why so you said when you print, it's good for you, but when you print, it's bad for people that work for money. Because when you print, savers get creamed and people who work for money get creamed. When they print, debtors get rich. You see, debt and taxes make the rich richer. And debt and taxes make the poor middle class poorer. When we have obsolete ideas, we get obsolete results. So what's happening for most people, the idea of going to school, mm -hmm. getting a job, working hard, saving money, getting out of debt, buying your house because it's an asset and investing for the long term is obsolete. The world has changed. The world changed in 1971 when President Nixon took us off the gold standard and money became debt. What if we get rid of school? Then what would happen? Would it be better if we had no educational system at all? No, I'm saying education is more important before. It's just obsolete. You know, there's Moore's Law that Moore's Law which states information doubles every 18 months. In other words, everything's obsolete 18 months. Mm -hmm. So, and this is just a recent phenomenon. So when you come out of school, you're already obsolete. And that's why I'm the old guy, you know, I meet my friends who went to Harvard. So yeah, I went to Harvard. I said, yeah, that was how long, 50 years ago? Today, the banks are charging you interest to save money. In other words, the banks don't want your money because they printed too much of it. And that's why there's these bubbles and stocks and bubbles and real estate and all this. People are dumping the cash. It's as I said in here, savers are losers and cash is trash. And yet people are, well, I want a high paying job. Well, that's an obsolete idea. Get out of debt is an obsolete idea. You should learn how to get into debt, how to use debt to get rich. And they'll never teach you about taxes. The reason the 1% is way up here and the 99% are going this way is because when you print money, two things happen, inflation and taxes. It's crushing. And any entrepreneur thinks I'm just going to make money and I'm going to start a business and make a lot of money because that we talk about, they really have got to smell the roses, man. You know, that's not what the real entrepreneurs are doing.
most entrepreneurs, there's 28 million small business owners in America. 24 million are, 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 what are one person entrepreneurs. They're called non-employee entrepreneurs. So the, because, and that's what happens is when people don't really understand what an entrepreneur does. So most big people are self-employed, but they're not really entrepreneurs. The self-employed pay the highest taxes of all. And nobody tells them that. Yeah, it, it's also called the entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. But what, what we were actually talking about was there's no such thing as a bad economy. You know, there's external, you and I, we all have an external economy but we also have an internal economy and the willpower is to change our internal economy. So for me, I can see the good and I can see the bad. I don't really give a damn because I'm gonna be rich anyway. But a poor person with a poor personal economy, all they're gonna see is a bad economy because they don't know how to make money in any economy. And a middle-class person, they have a middle-class economy. You know, they, what they want is a nice house, and a steady paycheck and the job and the car. And so when you take their job away to them, that's disaster. Well, since an entrepreneur doesn't have a job anyway, it's no big deal. So all I'm saying to people, and it's what Bucky Fuller taught me, is always two sides, you know what I mean? You know, to use plural, at minimum two. So if you think the economy is bad, it's because your economy is bad. If you think that steady, you know, employment is important, then you'll see an, uh, an economy without jobs. Your economy versus the external economy. What you control versus what you can't control. I can control. Yeah, it's called, sure. an, it's called an internal focus mm -hmm. versus an external focus. So the real entrepreneur has an internal focus. But if they fall down, they say, oh, this is good because I'm going to go up higher. You know, the average person will fall down and say, oh, I'm going to take some Prozac. Or, or, the, or somebody has a mistake, all so the mistakes don't matter. Well, mistakes, mistakes matter. It means you didn't know something. But a real entrepreneur, whether they fall down, they go, they always can go on. They can stand back up and go higher. And no matter what happens to them, they get stronger and better and smarter and happier. But a person with a weak internal mindset is that they're so afraid of what happens, it generally happens. Like you know, people who are afraid of losing their jobs, they generally lose their jobs. I mean, yeah, so, so, yeah, so you, you can control you. Yeah, so the entrepreneur first job is to control inside here, not outside there. The moment you take that paycheck, you're an employee. You've got to be stronger than that. It's about inside control. Hi, this is Robert Kales. <clears throat> Okay, now we're going to go ahead and get into our lesson and training for the day. Uh, basically, just keep in mind that it's all about your mindset and then putting yourself in a thought pattern of what you're going to do with this opportunity, as well as putting the fact you got to put the work in to get to where you want to be and whatever you want to be is going to take some hard work. If you do have uh, obstacles and you fall or whatever, it's all about staying in the fight, getting back up, trying harder tomorrow. The purpose of these Never sessions quitting. is to help people really learn how to match the skill. I want to say it's not just uh, market ideas or trades or signals, what everybody wants to call them, uh, but really to teach you how to actually do this. Um, and that's really where the power comes in for you guys to really make money long term. It's not just to receive trades like you would receive fish, but to actually learn how to fish. And that's why we have these sessions. So I uh, want to welcome all the new members again. Uh, we gave recognition as well yesterday. So uh, thank you to everybody out there who submitted the information for the flyers. We appreciate you guys and are just super proud of all the Club 50 and Club 100 members. Again, the email is jbboy25 at gmail.com. Please share that with your teams. It's a win rate of 70% or above on 50 consecutive trades or 70% and above on 100 consecutive trades. Okay? We don't care if it takes you a day, two days, a week, or a month. However long it takes you to reach that mark, that benchmark of 50 or 100, we want to recognize you every Friday. So it's jbboy25 at gmail.com. It's your name, clear photo of yourself, and then put in the email the number of wins, losses, and win rate percentage. Okay. Uh, very important. We just want to see proof of the trade, but give us those numbers as well. That way we can verify it. So send that information uh, when you can. I do want to mention as well, uh, for anyone who's on Instagram, the only account that I have on there is one account, Brandon Boyd Official. It's one that has 47,700 followers. 
any other accounts a fake account i have one account make sure that if you see those other accounts with my name that you actually report and block those accounts mine has forty-seven thousand seven hundred followers brandon boyd official now um i'm going to do a share screen with you guys here real quick as we get started here take myself off the camera if at any time you cannot see my screen let me know one of these services that we have that has a strategy inside of it that we use a lot is called cash trap the actual service is hourglass the strategy inside of it's called cash trap what you're going to notice here is that every five minutes it gives an up or down arrow a call or a put and on the right this is what's called an alert panel which is basically uh, going to tell you every five minutes of a new trade opportunity that pops up so because we train on this so often i want to recommend to you if you haven't already you can go in your back office and under the menu tab, scroll down to where it says shopping cart. Under shopping cart, you can add hourglass. 73 cents a day, $22 a month, no contract, it's month to month. Try it out for a month. If you like it, great. If not, turn it off. We don't actually get paid any money uh, for those subscriptions. It's just, we recommend it because it is an add-on. Um, it is the number one use scanner in HFX. And so because we train out so often, we do recommend you guys get that, all right? Now, part of our service would go live. Obviously, you guys are on here. You just go here, you pick a channel. And what I wanna uh, really kind of tune your mind and your eyes to on this is what you're gonna see is we train five days a week. Uh, we are one of the few educators in all of Go Live that train five days a week, not including all the Zooms that we do. When you click on this here, it's going to bring you to our channel and I want you to pay attention underneath here where it says recorded sessions. So when we do a session like we're doing right now, all of them are recorded and titled immediately within three minutes when the session is over. To the far right, see where it says search video. It is an open field. I can type in cash trap. So I can actually type in keywords for trainings that I'm looking uh, to find. It could be trade entry reasons. It could be support and resistance, Bollinger Bands, all those kinds of things that people are searching for uh, when they're trying to find a, a particular subject, you can actually type in that search bar. But the one I really want you to pay attention to is the favorite sessions. From the feedback that we get from all the customers, they tell us that, hey, these videos are really making a difference. They are organized, they're Titled, and I promise you that if you watch these, it will drastically improve your trading results. Not only your mindset, but the results you're getting from your trading. That's why we star them and put them under the favorite video section. Okay. So now what I want to do is I'm going to bring myself back up on camera and we're going to get right into the training. We always start with mindset first. We just do uh, just a couple minutes on mindset and we go right into the training. Again, I want to remind you, this is to help you learn and master the skill of how to become a phenomenal trader. So I've got a trading partner and educator, Dr. Lee, someone who is formerly a doctor today who is a full-time trader. Like me, he's got a big family. Um, and because he was a doctor for a number of years, I presented this to him as a way <clears throat> that he could eventually get out of that and really create time freedom because I'd already kind of created time freedom and traveled all around the world and uh, because he and I had been best friends for 19 years, met back in college, I said, you know, you really need to check this out. Kind of did it as a side hustle at first, was already putting in 60 to 80 hours a week, was doing it on the side. So the reason why I tell you that is he had a big family, was doing it on the side, and now got to the position where about two years ago, this is what he does. If he can do that, you can do that because it doesn't take a 4.0 GPA. It doesn't take a genius. What it does take is persistence. It takes patience. It takes discipline. It takes being steady. And eventually, it's going to take off. With that, we'll welcome Dr. Lee. Guys, put some fire emojis inside the box for the doctor. Excellent. Thank you so much, Brandon. It's great to be with you all today. Today is Tuesday, so we're still on the earlier side of the week, and we're going to be covering some market fundamentals that are 
very important, crucially important to your long-term trade success. So we'll be covering those in great detail with you today. And as Brandon mentioned, we're going to start out with some mindset things first, and then we'll jump into the details of talking about uh, a few key topics that are very important for your trading. These topics also are in response to a number of the questions that we get on a regular basis in the uh, in the chat section of Go Live. We're always looking at that. Sometimes we don't we're not able to respond immediately to the, a lot of the questions that show up in that chat, but just know that we do refer back to them and we look at those questions. We're always looking for that, that, that information, that content that maybe isn't quite as clear to people. And so we want to be able to respond and provide that clarity. Our goal here is to help you master this skill. And so if you do have questions, feel free to email those directly to us or to post them in the chat. We do look back through those and we try to get to them in future sessions. So let's jump right into this. I'm going to share my screen with you and we'll get going. <clears throat> Excellent. So first of all, with regards to mindset, we always talk about this idea of learning how to fish. This is so crucially important. And sometimes people, they get a little tired of it. And it's like, you know, we've talked enough about fishing, but why do we keep in, in, in reinforcing this idea? As you are learning how to fish, we're helping you to create financial independence. You see, anybody can hand you a fish for that day, for that meal, and, and that'll feed you for that moment. Right? But what we really want to provide you with is something that's far greater. We want to provide you with the opportunity to obtain the skill and develop that financial independence where you don't, you don't need to rely on me giving you a signal, a brand giving you a signal, or any educator for that matter. But you can actually go out there and catch some fish on your own. We have many people in our organization who are now calling out live trades themselves with different groups of, of, of individuals within the team. And as they do so, to me, honestly, it's, it, it, I get a great sense of satisfaction seeing their independence, seeing that strength, seeing that ability to do it. And But I can also tell you that in the very beginning, with each of these individuals who are, who are doing that today, many of them, when they were first starting out, there was a lot of complaints. There was a lot of pushback. They said, ah, Dr. Lee, please, can't you just call out some live trades? Just give us the signals. Just give us what we want right now. And, and, and the harder thing to do was actually – to kind of push back and say, you know what, I know it'll make you happy for the next five minutes to get a trade, but here's the reality. If I can give you something that you actually need, I recognize that I'm going to give you that independence long term. And so that's kind of the messaging for today. And uh, to tie that in, I want to give you this quote by Tom Landry. Tom Landry was a famous uh, Dallas Cowboys coach, one of the winningest coach, uh, coaches of all time. And he says this, a coach is someone who tells you what you don't want to hear. Who has, who has you see what you don't want to see so that you can be, be who you have always known that you could be? You see, most people aspire to be successful. They want to become wealthy. They want to have good relationships. They want to have good fitness. But unless they can open up to sometimes to the eyes of other people, sometimes this is a coach, a mentor, uh, sometimes it could be a friend or a spouse. Ultimately, we have to open up and say, what, what am I doing and what am I not doing? That will, that's ultimately uh, keeping me from the goals that I claim to desire. Uh, because many of us would say, I want to be successful, but if we're not willing to do those steps to actually get there, then our true desire is not really to be successful. Okay, that's kind of the hard truth. So our goal is to give you that information that you truly need. To add to that, this additional thought, giving a fish provides a single meal, but it creates dependency. We see this oftentimes in governments and welfare programs, and I'm not condemning the, the existence of these type of assistance programs because they are useful at times. But interestingly enough, in societies, in governments, and, and in situations where there are these kind of dependency type programs, what we often see is that they don't get smaller. They actually grow. In, in other words, more and more people tend to get onto the programs. Why? Because it's kind of free food. It's free money. It's free whatever. And so we, we see that a little bit. And so within the I Am Mastery Academy, we try to provide both sides. You don't have to just rely on one or just never get any, any of those, those trade ideas, but we provide both. So you can get on sessions with Ness Velasquez, with D.L. Woods, with Matthew Thayer, with Millie Mills, with all these different educators who are providing trade ideas and, and giving some basic education on how to go about taking their trades. But ultimately, if you want to learn how to fish and you want to gain that independence, then that's what this program is all about, to teach you how to master the skill and to teach, you, to teach you how to fish so that we can provide you with a lifetime of meals and to, and to create independence in your life. True happiness comes from independence. In the very early stages of the United States, 
uh, Thomas Jefferson, he wrote what was called the Declaration of Independence. That declaration really was saying, we are free. We are declaring our freedom and independence of, of the, th the original 13 colonies of the United States from Great Britain at the time. OK, so it doesn't it didn't mean that Great Britain is always the enemy or something like that. But but rather that in each of our situations, in each of our lives, whether we're a child within a family, whether we're uh, you know employed within a business, at some point. You need to have, in a sense, your own declaration of independence. You have to decide for yourself that you will be that you will break yourself from the dependency upon others. Doesn't mean you don't learn from people and so forth, but ultimately that you will seek that independence. And the only way to do that is to master the skill. And when that goes for any skill in life, if you want to have good relationships, you have to master the skills that are going to help you have better relationships. If you want to have health and fitness in your life. You have to develop the skills and the knowledge and, and, and the discipline in order to apply those principles that will ultimately help you to become a healthy and physically fit person. There's no shortcuts. You have to do that work. And so uh, for, for this program, in our Master the Skill series, we are, our goal is to help you become financially independent by obtaining the skill that will enable you to trade anytime you want during any market session, anytime, night or day, whether you have access to Brandon and I or not. And so uh, with that, today, we're going to get into some powerful concepts that will help you do just that. So let's get right into this. So we talk all the time about price movement and how price moves in waves and it's constantly going up and down. And our the knowledge we need to obtain is how do we identify which price, which direction that price will go next? That's how we make our money in HFX. Uh, we also assign a time expiration once we've determined uh, based upon the evidence which direction price is likely to go. It's always a likely. There's a certain probability uh, simply because it, it doesn't always go in that direction. You're not going to be right 100% of the time. And the good news is you don't need to be. But we seek to be right most of the time. And we also need to know when do we get in the trade as well as the specific time expiration. In other words, when is that trade going to end? Uh, that is a that is a uh, an important element of our overall trade decisions. Yesterday we talked a bit about what moves price in the markets, and so we won't cover that so much today. But it's important to always remember that price moves up and down based upon a balance of buyers and sellers in the market. People who predict the price will go up, or people who pr predict the price will go down. And we want to trade primarily during times of higher volume and higher volatility. Volatility simply means that price is moving in a given direction. And that's what we want. We want when we place a call option predicting price will go up, we want price to move in that direction, right? So that's where volatility is on your side. And then our, our ultimate goal is to identify uh, where those points of, of direction changes will occur. And, that, and that's where we want to take our trade. So today we're going to be talking about three key concepts to help improve our understanding of how to identify the different pivot points in the market. Now, yesterday we covered uh, these basic price patterns, reversals, or the breakout and retest. Um, and those are the really the two core things that price does all the time over and over again in the market. Uh, we can see that here just in a simple example. We'll even just kind of get rid of some of these indicators here uh, on Bitcoin. Bitcoin has been rising significantly over the last while. But no matter how fast it rises or no matter uh, you know how much it moves, ultimately it's following these same breakout and retest patterns over and over and over again. And so just real quickly, I'm just going to throw in a few lines to help illustrate where some of these pivot points are. Okay, each time that each time that price changes directions and then <clears throat> ultimately breaks out beyond that pivot point that we call that a breakout. And so here we have a number of breakouts to the upside. It comes back down to retest to those previous zones and then it continues in its given direction. And so when as we identify some of these key pivot levels, we can see uh, what price will likely do next. OK. All right. So in this simple example with Bitcoin here, we'll use this path tool to just kind of illustrate what's going on here. So price was kind of moving sideways for a bit. And then price finally broke out to the upside, retest to this previous pivot point here, broke out again, retest, breaks out again, retest. Where is it retesting to? This previous pivot point here. Breakout, retest, breakout, retest. We had a little bit of lateralization, a consolidation phase, which is normal. Uh, most phases don't stay in trending time forever or in consolidation forever. So we're going to see some transition times. So here price went into a little bit of a consolidation phase, slight bit of a, of a downtrend there for a moment based on this hourly time frame chart. 
consolidate it, and then eventually we get the breakout, retest, and then price comes up again, consolidates for a bit. We finally get a breakout above this pivot point here, retest, and then price pushes up. And so th again, these patterns occur over and over and over again. And so you can, sim you can simply apply a basic price action understanding of a breakout and retest in cash trap, and then look for arrows to confirm the trade in that direction. So you look for a breakout, wait for it to retest, get the arrow in the direction of the breakout, and you've got a solid trade opportunity. And so those, that's a, a very simplistic way of looking at the markets. And so uh, it's very important to understand that we don't have to overcomplicate this in order to be a good, successful trader. Sometimes when people consider certain professions such as medicine, such as engineering, it's very complex. There are literally hundreds of thousands of pieces of information that you have to be taking into account, calculations, knowledge of anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, et cetera, uh, in order to understand how to execute that specific profession. Well, luckily, when it comes to trading, you don't have to be a professional economist. You don't have to be a statistician. You don't have to be an actuarian. You don't have to have a doctoral degree in any of these areas in order to be a good trader. If you can look at a few basic visual patterns without even knowing any of the data that's going on uh, with those patterns, right, behind the price, what's causing price to move up, you could say, I have no clue why, why Bitcoin's going up, but I keep winning on all these call options because I can read the price action behavior. You see, winning in trading is, simple, is as simple as looking at visual patterns and then looking for some specific confirmations, all of which can be confirmed visually. You don't have to read any data. You can say, I'm not good with numbers. You don't need to be good with numbers. For me, myself, I, never, I almost never look at the price. I don't care about price. Because whether this price right now, you know, currently Bitcoin's at $46,759, it could say $2,000. It wouldn't matter to me. I'm simply looking at price action behaviors. The price does not matter. The price, in fact, can often be a, uh, an inhibitor to people's mindset. Because what they say in their mind is, oh, Bitcoin's at 48,000, it can't go any higher. Oh, now it's at 50,000, it can't go any higher. Surely it can't go any higher. And they start to mess with their own emotions and begin to, to reason emotionally on why the price either can't go any higher, can't go any lower or whatnot. And the truth of the matter is, is that the price can go anywhere it wants. It can go as low as zero and it can go as high as infinity. And so anything in between the two uh, is a possibility. And so rather than placing artificial psychological limitations on what price will do based on what we think of the price, ultimately, we just simply need to look at the actual price patterns, and then we can make our future <laughs> with a high degree of accuracy and win rate. So as we look at this, the, the question then comes arises is how do we identify these different pivot points so that we can see in real time where these pivots are taking place, when the breakouts are taking place. And so I want to talk about a concept that we've covered in the past, but it's important to review, and that is a flat tops and flat bottoms. So this is the first point we'll be discussing today. So within price action, price is going either in the upward or, or downward direction. And anytime it change, changes directions, it creates these flat tops and flat bottoms. And when we refer to a flat top or flat bottom, what we're talking about is the body of the candle. You'll see these wicks, the black lines that protrude either out of the top of the candle bodies or out of the bottom. And for the sake of identifying these levels, the wicks and the shapes of the wicks, the length of the wicks, or, or when a wick is not even there at all, does not matter for the sake of just simply identifying these flat tops and flat bottoms. So in this first example here up top, you'll note that the top of the, the green candle came up to this point. And when we see a green candle or a blue candle in, in uh, Go Liberty or in Cash Trap, a blue candle or a green candle simply means that price started down here at the bottom of the body and then it closed at the top. It was overall an upward moving candle. And so when that candle closes on whatever time frame chart you're looking at and then the new candle opens it, it opens at the same level and then in this particular example the candle went down leaving us with a red candle that means the price opened here at the top of the body and it closed at the bottom and so this flat top you'll note that the top of the green candle and the top of the red candle are at the same level so we refer to that as a flat top if you compare that to the bottom of this green candle here and the bottom of this red candle, they're not at the same location. So that would not be considered to be a flat bottom. But next, as this red candle came down, another green candle formed and it went back up. And so as it did so, it gave us a new flat bottom. In other words, the red candle first 
and the green candle afterwards are both at the same level and that gives us a flat bottom. What does this ultimately mean? These flat tops and flat bottoms are showing us where the uh, price levels are at which price changed directions. Okay, yes, price did get up to wherever the wicks may have gone, um, but ultimately the closed price uh, price direction change occurred at the flat top or the flat bottom. And so, and I'll show you on the live chart kind of how we can begin to keep track of this, but this is a very useful thing to identify as you're looking at price patterning and so forth, because this can give you a clue as to where the pivot points are. When a person looks at a live chart and they say, well, where are the pivot points? Where is price responding to? Where do I need to look for a, a trade opportunity? Identifying these flat tops and flat bottoms uh, can become very useful. And so um, we'll jump into some, some very minutiae detail examples here uh, on gold on the one minute time frame chart. People ask, often ask, why do we look at the one minute chart versus five minute or, or whatnot? The primary reason why I look at the one minute chart and, and, and use it for illustration purposes is, is because these candles form very quickly. And so it shows us lots of examples. And I really want that repetition element to show you how this plays out. Um, whereas higher time frame charts, the same principles apply, but it takes a lot longer uh, for, for the patterns to play out and to show up uh, if we're having to wait an entire day or multiple hours for each candle to form. Whereas on a one minute chart, all we're waiting for is literally one minute for a new candle to form. So we see the pattern repeating itself over and over and over again as we're looking at that. So flat tops and flat bottoms. So let's just take a look at some of this pre recent price activity here. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Apologize for that. Just inhaled in the wrong pipe there. Okay, so flat tops and flat bottoms. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take our little brush tool. And we're just going to start marking these up. And here we're looking at current price activity. You can see the live candle here on the right side of our screen. And so let's just kind of go through some of this recent price activity and just simply mark up the flat tops and flat bottoms. And you'll begin to see how these, these start to give you a clue for where price is going to respond. So here on our left side of our screen, we see our first flat bottom. You can see this red candle came down and immediately this green candle goes up. What that means, again, is that price went down. And at that level, it turned around and went back up. Yes, it did come all the way down to the bottom of this wick here. And that's okay. That This becomes our zone. We can consider the space between the, the flat bottom or the flat top, if you will, and, and then the end of the wick kind of as that zone or area in which you can look for price to come to in the event of a breakout and retest. So here we also have a flat top. So a green candle came up. And then we saw a, uh, a red candle right afterwards. And let me zoom in on this to make sure that you can see this clearly. <clears throat> so hopefully that provides a little bit of clarity on the flat top and flat bottom on those two examples. Price came down. We have all these red candles. We have this green candle that shoots up. So now we have a new flat bottom. Price immediately drops after that. We have a new flat top there. Here's another flat bottom. No surprise that it's right at the same basic location. Came all the way up here. Here's a new flat top flat bottom. And again, this, this particular exercise is something that you want to do just to simply begin to see where price is pivoting. The better you can get at identifying where price is pivoting, the better you'll be able to filter through a lot of the arrows that you see in cash trap when it's giving you up and down arrows, when you're identifying trend direction and so forth. If you can start to identify where some of these recent pivots are, all of a sudden you can begin to build a framework of where price will likely respond next, okay? And be able to filter through some of those arrows. All right, so here's some more flat tops, flat bottoms. Here's another flat top. Price came down to this level, flat bottom. Here's a flat top. And so I would encourage you to simply go on your chart and you can do this directly in Go Liberty. You can do this directly in Cash Trap. Just grab the uh, brush tool over here on the left side of your screen, and you can literally just start drawing those lines on here. You can choose whatever color that you want. You can increase the thickness if you need to see it better. And literally just start drawing some lines. You say, okay, here's a flat top, here's a flat bottom, here's a flat top here, here's another flat top here, here's another flat top, and another flat top. So we, here we've got a bunch of flat tops right all at the same level. Um, in Pickpocket in particular, it kind of does this for you with this top and bottom black line. It shows you kind of some of the most recent flat tops and flat bottoms. But again, so what does this all mean? When we're drawing these lines, ultimately, what, what do these mean? Well, here's where it becomes useful. 
as you're identifying where price will likely change directions, you want to then I utilize a flat top and flat bottom as an area of potential launch pad. Now, a launch pad is a concept where if you think about a rocket ship or a spaceship or something like that, they first put the rocket on top of a platform. That platform is the launch pad that will provide some uh, support and a solid base from which price can respond or from which the rocket can respond, okay? And so if we just start here on our left side with, with these flat tops and flat bottoms, again, we see that price went down, pivoted up, and we have a breakout to the downside, okay? Where did it break out from? This previous flat bottom, okay? So where do we expect, expect price to come back up to? Generally speaking, it's into this zone. So you can grab your rectangle tool and you can say, okay, if price comes into this zone here between the wick and the body, it gives you kind of a, a, a little bit of flexibility, right? And if you, uh, you can wait for a confirmation candle if you want, or you can just enter preemptively. People do a little bit of both um, <clears throat> at different times. But so if price breaks out and if price comes back up to this level, and if we get a confirmation candle, which would be one candle in the direction of the breakout, then we could take the trade. So if we look at this example, this would be our confirmation candle here. Price did in fact come back into that zone. You could have entered on this first candle that pushed into that zone if you were preempting it. If you wait for a confirmation candle, you'd enter at the base of this red candle and you would enter for three candles. One, two, three, price would close at this level and you would win that trade. So all of a sudden, we, we, we not only had a, a solid trade opportunity that would have won, but we knew in advance where to look. And this is where it's very, very important. So price broke out to the downside, but where we were looking to take the trade was in this zone. Why? Because we identified this flat bottom that that was the most recent one that price broke out from. And that's a very important uh, concept as well is always look for the most recent one. There may be some uh, coinciding or some synergy between them. For example, we have, grab my brush tool, this flat bottom here, Price came up, we have now a flat top. We have another flat top here. We had another flat bottom. We have another flat bottom here. And so we have multiple responses in that zone, right? So there's no question there is some, some overall resistance in that area. Price is definitely responding to it. But when it comes to making your future price direction prediction, you always want to look at the most recent pivot from which price is broken out from. So this one here, once price has broken out from that, we're then looking for a put option in this zone. And, and you could say in the event of a confirmation candle, which we did here, and our trade would be entered at the close of that candle. Or like I said, you could preempt that as well. So once that has taken place at that point, then we're going to wait for price to create new pivots and new breakouts. So price pushes to the downside. Uh, and price holds this level here eventually breaks above this level, okay? But it also showed a new flat top. So here, price comes up, down temporarily, and forms this new flat top. So now essentially what we're saying is, the new scenario is if price breaks above that, and if price comes back down to this zone here, then we can look to take the trade for a call option. So even though, yes, there is some coinciding between these other points of resistance or how price has responded in the past, and that might provide some further evidence to suggest that price would go up in the event of an upward breakout, really what we're, what we're suggesting is that for our specific and immediate trade opportunity, we're actually looking more specifically at the most recent breakout level, the most recent flat top or flat bottom. So here, if we, if we um, let's uh, reset some of our drawing tools here just so this doesn't get too busy. <clears throat> and we'll do this. Um, grab our rectangle tool here. So this is our, our zone. Why? Because here's our flat top. And, and, uh, and so basically we have a flat bottom down here. We have a flat top up here. So price, as we talked about the other day, can really only do one of two things. It's either going to reverse off of one of those levels or it'll break out of, uh, either above or below one of those two levels. And then we'll look for a retest. In this case, price immediately broke out to the upside. And so we're looking for price to come back into this zone and then give us a confirmation candle suggesting that the price would continue to go in the upward direction. So price broke up, comes down, 
this candle, which happens to be the confirmation candle as well, touches into that zone, again, the area between the body and the end of the wicks, and then we get a confirmation candle. Take that trade for three candles as a three candle rule. And again, people can take trades for different amounts of time. We're not saying you have to do three minutes, but as a starting point, if you need some guidance, that's a good place to start. It gives you enough time for, frankly, for some, for some error, right? You would have won in the first candle, but waiting for the third candle enabled price to go a lot further uh, after our entry point, and we would have won that call option trade. So <clears throat> as price breaks out above this flat top, we can expect price to come back into this new zone. So let's grab our little zone here, drag it above this level here. Okay. So there's our new zone based upon this new flat top. And so we're expecting that price can push above that level. Now we already won uh, this specific trade, but again, we're seeing this price, it retested here, but now we're breaking out to the upside. So we're expecting that price could come back into this zone and then continue in the upward direction. But this is where confirmation candles become very useful. If we preempted this and we just entered immediately as price got onto this into this zone, we, you would lose that trade. If you wait for a confirmation candle, you never would have gotten in the trade in the first place. Okay, where the purpose of a confirmation candle is to help provide some evidence that price is actually going to go in the direction of the breakout. Kind of gives you that final, in a sense, warm fuzzy. So here uh, we didn't get a confirmation candle. A confirmation candle would have been one green candle in the upward direction in this zone, and we didn't get it. So we don't take that trade. So this trade is no more. As, as uh, time goes on, we then form new flat tops and flat bottoms. Now, why are these important? Because these are the areas where price is changing direction. So it gives you a clue for where the market, in essence, is telling you where price will respond to. All right, so we have our flat bottom down here, okay? And we have our flat top up here. So we can create our little zone below as well as above and we say well we'll just wait for a breakout we'll look for price to respond uh, or either push out above or below this level and then we'll look for a confirmation candle on a retest so here price pushes up into this zone here we get our confirmation candle this red candle here why because our original breakout direction is to the downside and note how the pivot point that we're considering here is this one Okay, this, this pivot point here. Why? Because that's the most recent. This will help keep you in tune with what price is currently doing. And again, it doesn't mean that you'll never see it match up and blend with other previous pivot points in the past. But the most important one is the most recent. That's the one that price will likely respond to. All right, so price uh, pushes up to this level. And we would expect that if we get a confirmation candle, that price will push to the downside. And that becomes the, the uh, reasoning for our entry. So here we would take a trade uh, uh, at the close of this candle here. And then even though this one is quite close, if you do this for three candles, price closes slightly below our entry point. On these type of trades, I often will do a fixed time. That way I know that my, my trade results will actually match up with what the candles do. Uh, because sometimes in those last few seconds of a candle closing, it may be close, but I want to know and I want to be able to back test and see, are, is this going to work out or not? Does that make sense? So <clears throat> ultimately, we have uh, another winning trade, just even in those. So next, again, we just keep following in line with what price is doing next. So we have another flat top here, another flat bottom here, and we're waiting for price to simply break out to one side or the other, unless future flat tops and flat bottoms are created. We have another flat top that was... Okay, <clears throat> what we're gonna do next is uh, do some prac app here. Uh, we're gonna practice what they just what they just basically taught us today. So if you guys want to, uh, like I said, take turns sharing your screen if you can, I'll go ahead and start. I'm gonna start with GJ.
And we just want to see if we can identify some zones as well as pivot point, confirmation candle, flat top, flat bottoms. And he said, you want to start with the most recent pivot. So I'm going to look right here, identify some pivot points. So right here, oh, wait a minute. Try that. I don't like that. Trying to find some I want to use real quick. Okay, so there's a flat top there. I'm just identifying the pivot points. In real time, okay. So I see four of them so far. I mean, there's more. I'm just doing a few. I'm going to get rid of those now. I want to make my zones next. Don't want to have it too crowded so you guys can see. Okay, so basically, I already have some zones drawn up here. As you can see. So here we have price breaking up, coming down, going through the zone, kept going up. Finally, come back to retest the zone here. Okay, I'm gonna stop here for a second. Right here is my confirm. Wait a minute, let me get that rid of that. Right here is green candle. That'll be my confirmation candle. It came here one time. Confirmation, boom, it's gone. Price breaks out, comes into the next zone. Retest the area here. Has another breakup. And you can see the three, there's flat tops all right here. Three flat tops, two flat tops in a row. There's my pivot right here. From here, it breaks down the retested zone again, breakout run. So this, this um, hold on, let me stop that real quick. Okay, so this particular setup, I will be taking calls here. So it was in, it was in consolidation here, had a fake out, then it made its move to the top side. As you can see, it was still uptrending. So now on the current market, let me see what I will look for now. Erase this stuff. Okay, so for now, let me make that bigger so we can see that. So here we go. So now if price comes down to 748 or below, I will go in for a call here. That will be my setup. Hey, Vaughn. Yes, sir. I had a question, bro. When you're making your supporting and resistance, what time frame do you start off with? On the daily. And then On the Monday? Down. No, the daily chart. Is that what you mean? Yeah, on the one-day time frame, on the, on the trading view. Yeah, on the daily. You start with a daily time frame chart. Would you see the D right there where my cursor is at? There's going to be hella, hella lines. I'm confused. You're saying marking up your chart, right? Yeah. Yeah, you start on your daily, work down to your four hour, go down to your 30, go down to your 15, and then your five minute chart. So all the lines you see on my chart, I started on the daily. And I work my way down to the four hour. 
in the one hour. In Your charter is deadly. Huh? Your charter is deadly. <laughs> yeah, so that's what you do. All so, right, I'm going to do that now. No problem, my friend. So you guys can see, I don't know if it was, if it came down, I wasn't looking at my chart here, but again, my entry would have been here. And as you see, it's continuing to do what I said, ABC. Remember, if it doesn't break structure, it must go the other way, ABC. Price comes down to your zone, does not break that structure, it must go the other way, ABC. So if you can remember ABC, you can use this strategy as far as not breaking through your zone, breaking retest, it's going back the other way. So if anybody else wants to share their screen, you can. Um, if not, we got about five more minutes for anything else you guys may want to cover. Hey, I was wondering if you could help me uh, set up my chart. What do you mean by that? Like mark it up? Yeah. Okay. Have you watched any of the I, I Am Academy videos yet? I watched like two. Two? Okay. I definitely strongly recommend you going through the entire academy. I can basically show you the basic steps, but the academy is going to teach you the basic stuff. Like what a candle like, means. Like, you know. I mean, you talked about watching the YouTube videos or like the I Am Academy, like the numbers and stuff you got to watch. Mm -hmm. Oh, I watched most of them. Okay. Yeah, you definitely want to finish the academy. I can definitely help you. But the academy will show you all those things, how to use trading view, things like that. Uh, because my chart, as you can see, it's already pretty scattered. So I can't really use that one. Let me try to find something blank for you that I haven't marked up real quick. So when you mark up a chart, does it stay on there for every time you go back to it? Well, once you mark up a chart, you can use it for most of your trades. And you can use it almost up to like two weeks or more. You know, so it depends on how you mark it up. But you don't have to, once you mark them up, it's like you just add to the lines at the five minute chart level. And then you should be good to go. Do you want to share your screen or you want me to show you on my chart? I was wondering if I could share my screen and see if oh, I'm yeah. doing it right. Sure. I'm going to stop sharing. Now you can go ahead and share. Let me make sure you can share real quick. Okay. You should Those guys really boot camp. Say again? Your setup in the background is really boot camped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you was in the army or something? Marines. Oh, uh, that's what's up. Yep, yep. Thank you, sir. If you see my screen, bro? Yes, sir. All right. So, so when you're starting from the one daily, you look for the highest and the lowest first, right? Well, exactly. But you can start, what I normally do is start from the bottom and work my way up. But there's no set way to do it. That's just how I do it. But long, you just want to find your highs and lows. All right. When you when you drying it up, do do you put it on your body or the, like the wick? On the wick. Okay. Why? Wait, 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 wait. Go back to the daily, sir. Okay. First of all, you have to make sure you find and you identifying all of your your spots. You only put two lines on your chart, so you want to make sure you're covering the levels. So you want to find two or more points of contact. So if you see, bring your cursor down a little bit. Come up, come up some. Keep going up. Okay, come go down. Come down a little more. You'll see a peak. Put the cursor where the peak is at, right, right, right there. So you look left. So you see that that if you, your imaginary your dotted line right now is touching candles to the left. You see those like the little M over there to the. If you look look to the left, look like an M over there, right? You see right here. all the way over to your left. Right here. Yeah, but come down, come back down. You see those, see that, go back up some, a little, just a little bit. See how your line is touching those candles there? Yeah. If you look left and right, everything is lining up. So you want to put a line there. Because that's oh, a of a resistance. What it did previously. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So sense. you always want to look left to see what the market has done previously. And that's going to give you your levels of support. And also showing you what price has done in the past. So you'll know what to do. Wait a minute. 
What line did you just use? The horizontal line. Uh, horizontal line goes longer than that. He must have made a mistake and put something else. Let me the check. horizontal line is going to keep going for you. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I see you, what you're using the ray. Use the horizontal line. Was that not the horizontal line I was using? No. Right there, what one you got starred right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was clicking the ray. Yeah, you clicked on ray. Mm -hmm. Bring that line up some. You, you're a little low from where we were looking at. You wanted to test the wicks. And you got your chart pretty small um, where you can't really see the lines. So uh, if you can see it, fine. But on my end, it's, it's a little challenging to see all of your lines. Yeah, how do you see, fix that? Yeah, you're going to have to practice that because that's that's not easy to do for, you know, beginners. My best thing and my best advice to show you, I can show you. Give me one second. But it's kind of hard definitely to explain over the Zoom, but I can show you on my chart. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, actually, you show me and then I'm going to just base it off of that. Yeah, so you see my cursor over here in the numbers? Mm -hmm. So if you drag here, see how it makes the, the chart go smaller and bigger? Yeah, I was wondering why it was so clear. And then you come here in the chart and use your roller on your mouse. That'll make the candles get narrower like that. And if you go down on my on my Mac, I, I go down, it expands them out, make them wider. So it's two different things. And then if you want the chart to move, you click on your chart and you can drag the, drag and hold the chart up and down like that. And auto should help you put the chart back in the normal phase like it just did. So if I do it like this and I push auto, it should bounce it back to the normal position. But why my candles don't look like your shit, bro? Let me see. Okay. Well, you just got to make an adjustment, man. That's all. All right. Mm, but it's going to take some practice, though. All right, bro. All right, you're good for it, bro. It's making sense, though. I'm going to just watch the videos you you recommending, and that's about it. Oh, yeah. No problem. Yes, sir. Man, I'd be seeing your chart ups in the group chat. I'd be shocked. Well, yeah, I appreciate that, man. But I tell you, just it just, it just takes some work, man, and really just practicing and continuing to do it every day. If you mark charts every day, you know, at least five charts a day, you'll start to get better at it. Um, so don't beat yourself up. You don't get it the first day. But the more you practice and the more charts you put out there for feedback, man, you're going to get better and better and better. Yeah, that's what I'm avoiding, that putting that shit out there for feedback. Well, no, man, don't worry. Even you got one line on your chart, man. That doesn't matter. That's that's the reason why we got the uh, the chat group, so that you can get feedback and get some help. When I started out marking charts up, I did't know what the heck I was doing. I was asking, what, is this right? Am I doing this right? And finally, I got it, and I just kept going. But Yeah, my brother, LJ, mm -hmm. he recommended me that you knew how to do the chart-ups the best. So I'm like, man, let me see what Von talk like. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. But yeah, it, you know, so like I said, if you want to hop on a Zoom or something, no problem. But the best thing to do is just put them, put the lines in, just put it out there. Did I do this right? Okay, go back to the drawing board, try again. You know what I mean? And just keep going, keep trying. And you'll get better every day. But you got to do more than one chart a day, though. All right, for sure. <laughs> you know, I'm going to just put whatever I chart up, but regardless how it's looking, man. Exactly. Yeah, like you gotta like you gotta get in a position where you don't care. You don't care about looking corny. You don't care about being wrong or whatever. Um, I was trying to look stupid, man. Yeah, don't worry about none of that. Most well, definitely not. I'm gonna start charting up everything and then see if it's looking right. Send it. If it's not, go back to see what's wrong. Fix it. Send it again. Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. you be sending your shit to the group chat, and what you be actually charting up is actually correct. Cause I'd be actually looking at the on the broker and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It be playing all right with those web and everything. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Uh -huh. Like I said, just just uh, it just comes from putting in work on the charts, man. Every single day, that's all. Everything that I'm saying and um, asking y'all to do, I'm doing it myself. Trust me. So I'm just putting in the work consistently, man. Nothing more than what you guys can do. So uh, I appreciate all the responses, man, and the feedback. But we actually are out of time now. Um, but Monday we'll be back at seven thirty. Uh, Say again. Monday what time? Seven thirty. A.M. Uh, I appreciate it. Oh, no problem, my brother. You guys take care. Have a great day. Have a good weekend. Have a good you All too. Right. Yes, sir.